Yo, se enciende la luz, es hora de pasarla chido Estos psycho en el micro, sean todos bienvenidos De grandes a chicos, aquí tienen su lugar Aquí a la entrevista, a representar el paso Esta es mi ciudad, parece una locura Estamos sin censura So we're back here, behind the scenes At the boss's office And uh, so Joey, tell us a little bit about how this How this uh, came about, how this dream Was it a dream, was it, a, you know, how did this happen? Well, um, you know, I I, uh, I don't have a college education. I mean, I went to college, but I didn't, I didn't finish. Um, it just wasn't for me. Um, and so I just learned how to work. My dad taught me how to work early on. And um, this buddy of mine that, I grew, that I've known since I was like in the fifth grade, um, but this is going all the way back to 19... 95. So how long has the store, I, I know you say there's another location, the how long has that been? The store's only been up for five years. Okay, so and that'll put us the, back the in. The well business, which is what started, Okay. Uh, we've had since, golly, I think it's, I want to say it's like 10 or 11 years. Okay. Um, My business partner, uh, Bobby Scove, um, he and I grew up together. We were friends in grade school. And um, I was actually uh, running a horse farm, training horses. I never farmed. I didn't farm at all. And uh, he comes up to me one day, and he's like, hey, man. He says, you want to come work for us? We need a farm manager. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know how to manage a farm. He's like, no, but I know you learn things quick. And, and uh, we're tired of hiring people that know how to do it and don't do it the way we want. So we'd rather take somebody with a clean slate. And I did that, and I, I worked for them, and, and um, man, it was just, it, it, it was awesome. I managed their farm for them down in Hudspeth County, and we just had a great relationship. Uh, his dad is like a second dad to me. Um, they've been great. And um, uh, then I, I got to a point to where um, uh, I, I, I got real involved uh, uh, in ministry and stuff. And uh, I just felt the need and the calling to go do it full time. And I actually talked to Bobby's dad and he encouraged me to do it. He even told me to hold my job for a year just wow. to make sure that it was. And I did and it was and, and, and we, uh, I did that for, I don't know, probably four or five years, I think, full time ministry just. And, um, but then I, You know, I, I had a kid, I had a family, and, and uh, um, I needed to be able to provide and, and take care of them. So when I came back, they didn't really have, um, they didn't have my position anymore. All the, the, their kids were growing, growing up, and, and um, they didn't need me. And that, and that was cool. But there was another guy that had a farm that was managing it, and... and uh, Bobby and his dad really helped me get that job and took care of me. But then that man was an older man and he had his farm for sale and all this stuff. And then the drought hit. And, you know, for us, we grew up, we don't even hardly remember pumping water. Um, there was just the Elephant Butte was full. There was plenty of water in the dam and yeah. everybody just irrigated out of the canal. So when the drought hit, most of the guys that used to work on wells and fix them, They, uh, they they were either retired Went out of business or, yeah, yeah. Or, or they had to go somewhere else or, or whatever so there was nobody here and then we would bring people in uh, um, to work on the wells and they you know they didn't do good work um, cost a ton of money and and so um, And most of them were drillers. And so they didn't really want to mess with fixing the old wells. They just wanted to come drill a new drill, one, uh -huh. which costs a lot more. Okay. And uh, so Bobby, it's kind of funny. He went and got a pulling truck, and it was almost the exact same situation. He came to me and uh, with an idea of uh, working together in something that I had no clue how to do. <laughs> And uh, with the well business, yeah, okay. same thing. He was like, "Man, I want to, I want to start this business, and and um, and I want you to run it for me." And uh, and I was like, "I don't have a clue." And he goes, "Yeah, I know, but you know, you can figure it out." And um, 
I was at an age where I've spent my life working, making everybody money but me. And it wasn't so much that I wanted to get rich, but I just I wanted to have some ownership yeah. in something. And I, and I mentioned, I said that to him. I said, you know, I, I'd, I'd really like to have some ownership. And he says, well, you know what? We'll get it up and going. And, um, you know, if we can get it out of debt, um, you know, we, it, I'll give you an opportunity to buy into it. And I was like, okay. So we go to the lawyer to drop the, the business agreement and all of this. And... Um, <laughs> I just, uh, we're sitting there at the lawyer's office and the lawyer's like, okay, how do you want me to word this? You know, I understand you want to give him an opportunity for ownership, mm -hmm. you know, later on down the line or whatever. Um, how do you want me to word this or what are going to be the conditions or how do you want to do it? And uh, Bobby just kind of, he's like, you know what? Screw it. I'm 51%. He's 49. Like right there, just like that. And I just was like, I don't have, you know, I don't have any money to put into this. Yeah. You know, but all I had was sweat equity, mm -hmm. and that was enough for him. Yeah. You know, and um, so we started it. And the first day, I didn't even know how to raise the boom on the well truck. Um, but we just, we figured it out. He had plenty of wells to work on. We figured it out, and, and, and we just, uh, um, you know, Bobby and I both were raised by dads that were men of principle they were like if you're going to do something do it right you know no uh no half assing or, or or anything like that and so we just you know that's just the way we've always worked and we're raised to work you know if yeah. you're going to do it do it right if you're going to do a job do it right and um so we just figured out how to do it i went out to california and talked to some people that specialized in water well rehabilitation and kind of figured out what they did and all that stuff and we just started working on it working on it working on it and uh um you know now um we have all the work that we can handle and uh, you know we have helped uh it's been really cool uh um we've been able to help uh, a lot of these guys salvage wells that they had been told were not salvageable, mm -hmm. um, which saved them a ton of money and, and, a, and a fraction of money. And, and, and um, so that was really good. But, and it was a need. You know, there was a drought. They needed that. So then the, the retail businesses uh, started moving out, uh, particularly the pecan harvest, you know, beset. Uh, moved up to Las Cruces, you know, people figured out because of the way we're located here that We'll drive to Cruces if we have to because there's nowhere, nowhere going, uh -huh. going east. This side, uh -huh. You know what I mean? Um, and they could put themselves in a place where they can pretty much double their business without having to double their locations mm -hmm. And that really bothered us and we hated seeing everything kind of go out of our valley and and uh, uh, same old thing, you know, don't know anything about retail, don't know anything. <laughs> Bobby's like, I think we ought to put a store in. And I'm like, well, you know, once again, I'm, I'm the sweat, so, yeah. you know, but, but I, I'm good with that. And, and uh, so we kind of started with this idea and notion and, and um, but same thing, we, quality was very important to us. And that was one of the, we felt like still, still was you know, the top of the line and, uh, and, their, and their quality is there. You know, they're, they're where they're at because of the quality of the product that they turn out. And um, uh, so we started there and then we started trying to source aftermarket. We would go out to the Tulare Farm Show in California and go see, you know, here almost everything is exclusively John Deere. Okay. Uh, you don't see a lot. Uh, of, of other brands uh, um, I mean there's some international and there's some Ford but um, but out there in California man they, they got everything and so you know and we had enough experience to be able to go and look and say okay we like this we like that this is really good quality I think and we tried to go off of what we thought we would want and use and um, so uh, we, we found a couple of vendors, uh, uh, one of them, Northwest Tillers, where made a deal with them, and, and uh, we're, the, we're the Northwest Tiller and Northwest Flail Mower dealer. 
Um, we linked up uh, with a guy by the name of uh, Leroy Hughes, and he makes a, uh, uh, helps us with a lot of our aftermarket pecan harvest stuff. Um, but it was just it was relationships, you know. It, it, uh, pretty much everybody we deal with, it's important. It's important to me and it's important to us to be able to, to Have speak. A good I, don't, I don't fit in with this new day and age where everything's text and yeah. you know, emails. I mean, we've tried to adapt, but I want to speak to a live yeah. human being. And I want, to, I want to be on a first name basis. If I'm going to be doing business with you a lot, I want to be on a first name basis with you. I want to know who. Who it is, yeah. Not just an email, yeah. just a, you know, a text. Like exactly. Exactly. And uh, so... Um, you know, we, that, that's how the store came about, and we just kind of started it, and uh, um, didn't have a clue. And uh, but, you know, I my thing, and and, and this is why you know, Luce and and, and Michelle and and Michael, uh, my shop manager. I don't know if you've noticed this, but it seems to me here in El Paso, for some reason, in retail, you go places. And, and you're coming into their business, and they, they treat you almost like you're inconveniencing yeah. them. I, I, yeah, that's you know, true. Like, oh. That's true. You know, I, I, and that just drives me nuts. Yeah. Because I can go to cruises, and it's not that way, or I can go east of here. I don't know w what it is. Um, but I was determined that's not the way it's going to be. You know, we may not have a clue what we're doing, but we're going to be... But it's not going to be like that. We're going to yeah. be nice and, and, and yeah. honest and, you know, straightforward. And, and uh, uh, so that was one thing I was adamant about when we started looking at employees and, and people. I, that was what, really what I harped on. We can learn how to do everything else, but we are going to provide good service. You have know. you had um, Luz, uh, Michelle, and what's the other guy's name? Michael. Have, did they start with you? Michelle's been here almost from the very beginning. Mm. Uh, Luz actually worked at the at, at what used to be the Ace Hardware okay. in Fabens, and I knew her from you know before we were yeah. in this. That's where we would go. Go go by yourself. Um, and and uh, um, so when and that was another one of the reasons why we made the leap from Clint down to here. Uh, we didn't start off here because. You know, there's there's an AutoZone, there's an O'Reilly's, there's there was two hardware mm -hmm. stores, and so we went up to Clint where there's just not that much retail, and started real small. You know, we bought a small place. We're like, well, you know, mm -hmm. let's let's not break the bank if if we fall on our face if it just doesn't work, and um, um, so when the hardware store was closing down, and we knew this place was available, that was like the perfect opportunity. Yeah, and it was just it was. Awesome and and Michelle, I, I, you know, she's such a hard worker. But we were, I mean, we were kind of working her into the ground, you know, not intentionally, but yeah. I, but I mean, uh, because she's somebody that she's not going to tell me if I say, hey, can you do this? You know, she's not mm -hmm. going to say no. Uh, and she was working herself too hard. And and um, and then when we moved up here, you know, I could see it all over her face. You know, there's just. You know, how am I gonna do? How, how am I gonna do all yeah, this? Yeah, four times as you know. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, and Luce became available, and um, you know we jumped right on it. I already knew the type of person that she was when she worked at Ryan's, and you know Paul Ryan was was a friend of mine. He and I played we we'd sh play outdoor basketball, you know, on Friday nights and stuff, and uh, you know he passed away, and and then. Um, his kids grew up, moved away, and his and his his wife, you know, she sold that business, and and the guy that she sold it to, you know, for whatever reasons, it just didn't didn't work, and uh, and so that was also really cool for us because Luke was so loyal to that place, and she mm -hmm. so wanted to see Paul's vision carry on, and um, when it changed hands, the her employer. Uh, um, didn't give her the the ability to really uh, sometimes spread you gotta, her wings yeah, and fly. Exactly, that's what I was you know going to say. Mean? Sometimes you got to let employees, you know, do their thing. You know, I, I know to a certain extent, you know, but try to let them be themselves, you know. and Well, and you got to get to know them well enough to yeah. know what their strengths and weaknesses are. Mm -hmm. 
and play to their strengths yeah. and then try to figure out how to fill in where the weaknesses are, you know, uh, because nobody's perfect. Yeah, no. You know, um, and, and and we do, we try to have a, I mean, it's a business and yes, it's business. and uh, But we also try to have a, a kind of a family atmosphere yeah. type stuff and uh um you know she was at a point to where she wasn't sure what she was going to do when that was all closing down i'll tell you how bad it was she went home on a friday um and came to work on monday to find out that the doors were closed and they weren't going to oh. be in business anymore Without any warning or anything. Yeah, know. that's not good. Um, wow. And so, you know, when when she came to us and, and, and talked to me, I was like, of course, you know. Um, and it's been, I, I'll tell you, um, it's been so cool to see. You know, you always worry a little bit when you have somebody that, like Michelle, you know, who's been here. Um, I, I, chemistry. Yeah. You know how it is. I mean. You know, you you can have two superstars on a basketball team, but that doesn't mean that they're no, going to get a championship. Get along, yeah, because because you know yeah. they don't always gel, mm -hmm. um, and they have, uh, and they they complement each other very well. They work great together. They communicate well together. Um, and Luce has really we we've given with Michelle already kind of managing and stuff instead of Luce having to tend to all the managerial aspects of, of maintaining the store it's really allowed her to go out and sell and contact people mm -hmm. she you know like i said we just got episd we're a vendor for them utep um and she has just hustled and worked her tail off and those two together have have done so much and it's alleviated a lot of the the strain and and, and the burden for uh michelle um and then getting this place having the lot of the yard next door it also allowed me to bring both businesses when we were at clint i was still yarding over here at the farm for the well business um so now you got your stuff so now i've here. got everything here which allows me to be here and much more hands-on here um and this store gives me the ability to have more access uh um, you know, if Michael and them are having a problem, they're trying to figure something out, I can hear it from here. And I know, you know, mm -hmm. they don't have to stop what they're doing to come get me. And, and uh, or call Joey. Oh, well, he's over there. You know, yeah. he's just, if, yeah, if exactly. you're at the light, you're right there next door, you know, it's, yeah. it's not a 20, 30 minute wait. And see, Michael, I, I've known Michael, uh, um, he was actually the best man when I married uh, Blaine's mom. Oh, okay. And, uh, um, same thing. His he he worked for forty something years at Rudolph, in the service oh. department, and um, I mean, all the farmers down here that drove Chevys, they would take all their stuff over there, just because of the service that he provided as a as a tech there. Um, but he's getting older, and you know, driving all the way to Red Road. You know, they it was yeah. bad enough when they were downtown, and they moved to Red Road. Um, and you know he's got grandkids now he, he he wants to have more time and this is giving him the opportunity and he used to cut firewood on the side so he's very familiar with still um he knows how to use them and his customer service is just exceptional so you know we've put together I, I, it sounds like you got a good team man. oh I man mean. that you know and 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 that that makes things easy for me um and uh you know we're not we're not big and huge and, and, and you know, I'm not getting rich, uh, um, you know, off of this deal. Um, but it, it's, it's, I try to take care of them. That, that's what I was going to say. You're not getting rich, but look, Mike's doing his thing. Luz is, you know, like you, you more or less um, are, are, are having, they're having a secure thing with you, you know, and, and I guess that's the reason they're taking care of you. You're taking care of them. And and one of the things I, you know, I, I, early on I harped so much about service, 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 and I've learned, um, and maybe this is what's wrong in El Paso, maybe you've got too many people that don't enjoy what they're doing. Yeah. Because when you enjoy what you're doing, good customer service comes easy. 
because you're passionate about what you do, you're, mm -hmm. you know, and you care about it, and you care about doing a good job, and you care about providing a good service, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, I think that's a big part of it. Um, you know, uh, Bobby's dad told me a long time ago, work ain't work if you love what you're doing. Yeah. You know, uh, and I, and I, you know, I understand that can't be that way for everybody. I mean, you got to make a living. You got to put food on the table. Yeah. But, but if you can find that niche that, 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 that is your passion, like, like you with this, you know, I can see it in you. I, I you know, yeah. I, I watch your podcast and, and, and it's I'm like, man, that's, yeah, uh, that, he knows what he's doing. I like doing. what I you do. Know, it looks real. Perfect. I might, I might not be good at it because I don't do it as often. But I like what I do. So to me, it's like I'm no, not but, working. I'm not, you know. But but it you, doesn't stress me out or nothing. You know. You are, you know, yeah. and 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 of course, when you and I became friends, you know, that was one of the things that I loved about you initially, just how genuine you are. Yeah. You know what you see is what you get, um, and uh, you know what you're doing now. Golly, I thought I turned that off. Uh, sorry. Uh, your graphic design and stuff, and your, and your, and your you know your shirts, the shirts that you. Oh, you now I'm getting us. yeah. Now that's a shirt business too. You man. know, um, but that's you know that's where your heart is. That's where your passion is, and and uh, um, you can see it, and 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 it it makes it easy mm -hmm. to be good at something if you love doing it. Yeah. You know, I, I believe, I, you know, I might be way off my rocker, but, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm so, I will forever be indebted to uh, Bobby. You know, my, um, my great-grandfather immigrated here. He, he, he started off as a dishwasher in Bisbee, Arizona, um, and turned down, he turned down a promotion to be waiter because he didn't speak English well oh, enough, okay. and he was scared to death. He'd lose if he lost his job. They'd ship him back to, yeah. to Yugoslavia. It was Austria then, but um, so you know, um, I've just kind of Bobby's fourth generation. I'm fourth generation here in El Paso, um, and um, you know, we just we we love this town. We love our valley, um, and we love the people in it. And, and want to provide a good service for them. And, um, you know, that's really, you know, from the shop to the sales to the wells to whatever. And whatever else we do. I, yeah. I, I still, every now and then I keep waiting for him to walk through the door and, you know, come up with well, some, other, some idea other idea that yeah. I have no clue how to do that we'll do again. What, so. what doesn't Joey know how to do? <laughs> hmm, I think I'll start a business in that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's cool, you know, learning and figuring yeah. things out. That, that, that's kind of, I guess, a little bit of my drive. And, um, and as long as I feel like I, I love being in a position to, to serve the people I grew up around and take care of them. Cool, man. Well, Joey, I didn't bring my shot glasses and, oh, yeah. and, and whiskey bottle. bottle that's but, all right. Um, <laughs> It's working hours. But but um, <laughs> I wish you the best of luck. Um, and uh, keep on doing what you're doing, man. Well, it, it looks like a good thing, you know. I, I, I'm glad for the opportunity to do this. And, and you know, I, I, I'm happy to, to, to be a sponsor for Cycle One Sensor. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I love w watching you. Uh, um, do something that you love and Appreciate i feel like this is my you know you, it doesn't end with me you know or, or with you that, that whole idea of paying yeah. it forward you know how, how can you just you know somebody take a shot at uh, on you like bobby did with me and not want to then spread yeah. that to other people yes sir well there you have it people um any any last words you want to say maybe to Maybe that somebody wants to start a business and, and they're afraid to or or something like that. You know, do you have a um, a special message to... Don't do that to your customers. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't a customer. You don't treat no, customers like no, that. No, that's, that's, that's the Google. We, we haven't confirmed your Google stuff, the telemarketer. Oh, yet. okay. That's my telemarketer phone. Okay. 
It transfers directly yeah, to them. It sends it, it sends it directly to them. No, I, you know. Um, Wait, one more thing. One more thing before you give us your final message. <laughs> please, 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 do not ever have self checkout registers at this. No, point. no. Please, we're going to automate ourselves please. into unemployment, Man, I hate aren't those. we? No. Uh, no. Anyway, no. sorry to interrupt. No, no. Um, Just thought I'd get that get get that in there. No, you know I. I, I would just say that, that just what I said, you know, if you have an op if you can, if you have an opportunity to do something that you love and can make a living at it, do it because then work ain't work. Um, and success is not measured in money. Success is measured in how well you do what you do. I, I, I really believe that. And, and it's hard to do something well if it's if you don't really want to. if you really want man yeah. you know so uh my dad taught me to strive for excellence uh not because of the reward it would bring but because it's the right thing to do and i just think that that um you know we need a little bit more of that and uh if people can figure out a way to do that and be able to make a living doing it too they're gonna awesome. be happy yeah perfect yeah so there you have it people come pay um joey a visit um, again, it's uh, 15995 Alameda Avenue in Fabens, Texas, Rio Seco Ag and Supply. Yep. Correct. Come and phone see numbers? Us. Uh, my phone number, 915 539 2447. The store number is 915 851 6626. Social us media? Social media? Do you have social media? We, uh, we have a Facebook page, Rio Seco uh, Ag. We'll, we'll put that on the bottom. On, on Facebook. So y'all can follow. Mm -hmm. And we actually, we have a website. You can't shop on it, but you can see what we have and what we do. And Cool. But I, what I really do is invite you to come down, see if what I've been saying is true. And if it's not, let me know. Take um, a ride out here. Take a look at the store, see what they have. Later. See ya.